In today's show, we're going to continue our Power Apps Forms series. And today what we're going to do is we're going to explore the dot unsaved, the dot updates, and the dot last submit property of your form control, which is one of the special things that not a lot of other controls have, and they're also mostly undocumented. So we're going to go through these, make sure you understand how to use them, and really help you take your app to the next level. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're gonna go with our Power Apps forms. We're gonna go a little bit deeper. I'm pretty much almost as deep as we can get. So this is one of the last little concept things I need to teach you before we start building some crazy solutions with this. But these are some special properties that take your forms and let you start to do some really advanced stuff as you start to understand them. So what I thought we'd do is we go in here, we're gonna explore how these work, talk to you about where I use them, and then you'll know, call it a day because who needs a really long video? Fair enough, fair enough. All right, so let's just switch over to my desktop and get started. Okay, so I went ahead and threw together uh, just a normal gallery, right, being fed out of a SharePoint list. Had a new guy start yesterday, or yeah, yesterday, so he's in the list now too. And then I just did a normal form, uh, display form, right? And if any of this is new to you, there's a whole series ahead of this. There's links down below to the other videos, but I'm gonna assume you've watched those, so you're good with what I've got built here. So. What I wanted to do first is talk to you about the unsaved property. And so the unsaved property of a form lets you know if there's pending changes. So for example, right now, if we go in here, or if we go, we'll go play here, right? If I do, you know, I click on Greg, and I'm like, all right, Greg, and I type in he's a driver too, I don't know why, and then I'm about to like go somewhere else, right? There's no indication, there's no way for me to know that he updated this. Now we know that more specifically, you probably should have had the form in view only mode while you're browsing anyway, but sometimes you need to know when they've started to edit the form but not save their changes. So what I often will do, right? So let's go and we're gonna throw a label on the screen. I wanna say, you have unsaved changes, All right? So we'll do something like that. And then we will go up here to the home screen. We'll say, all right, let's make that a little bit bigger so it's easy for you guys to read. Change the color to red, okay? So there we have the you have unsaved changes. And what I'll do is you can go up here to then the visible for this particular warning and say, all right, visible, you're not just true. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say form two, right? That's the name of my form. You can tell by it got highlighted green, dot unsaved. So what, is that, what would that do? That would say if form2.unsaved evaluated to true, we would show this. If form2.unsaved form evaluates to false, then we wouldn't show this. So what should happen is we go over here, right? Let's get rid of that. So that's fine, right? We're in here, we're browsing, we're good. Let's check me out. Yep, my Power Apps guru. I'm a Power Apps guru too. As soon as I start to change that field, I have this warning of you have unsaved changes. So we can X over here. So this is how we would visually account for it. And the key is I want you to understand that form 2.unsaved, this is automatically handled by Power Apps for you. Now, one of the things you might notice though, is the moment I press a key, this went ahead and flagged I had, un had unsaved changes, which in this case is probably correct. But if you didn't want that behavior, let's just give you a little bonus tip here. Go over here. One of the things you have is an option called delay output. And so right now I have delay output set to true, which, which is funny because it's normally false by default. But when you set uh, delay output to true, what will happen is when you're typing, all right, so let's go over here, say play. So it doesn't take your changes until like you pause like a half a second, okay? So I, I can hit the thing, and then my thing pops up, right? But if I go over to this field where uh, delay output is false, which is a default value, the moment I press the key, it pops up. So this really doesn't manifest itself in these slow changes, but where this can really manifest itself, right, is if I go over here and I just start, look, I'm still going, my message hasn't popped up because that, the output is still delayed until I stop and then there it shows up. So. I wanted to make sure to just give you guys a little bonus tip there, right? Quit it out, boom. Okay, oh, let's put a, let's go back in there. Let's put change in again, just so it's showing. 
So the way that I will do, what I will really do with this, right, is so I, I have the warning text, but one of the things you can do is maybe you want to make your submit button not show up until they um, do it, right? So what we could do is insert a button. And this is the button we're going to use to submit our form to save our changes, right? So we'll call this the save button. And on select, as you already know, would be submit form, form two, boom, right? That would save our changes. But what I might do is you can go over here to my display mode. So buttons display modes are edit. When they're in edit, that means they're clickable. All the other modes are not clickable. But one of the special modes we can take advantage of is disabled. So what you might do is you might say if form two dot unsaved, right? And remember that evaluates the true or false. So when that's true, what do we want to do? We want to set the button mode. So we're going to say display mode. We want it to be, um, this annoys me, it doesn't show up, dot disabled. If it's not, then we want to have display mode as edit. Okay. Let's hit play, see what that does. So see right now my button, my save button is not there. I can't save my changes, which is weird. Probably not the proper logic, but my button is grayed out while there, there's unsaved changes. Now it's great. Now, so you probably wouldn't actually use that for your save button, but what you might do that for is for the button to navigate to the next screen, right? You don't want to let them go back to a different screen while they have unsaved changes. So then that's why you do that. So just pretend like I didn't make that a save button. I mean, pretend it was a navigate button. You guys are great. You can do that. But that's the idea, right? Is that we can use this unsaved property that we now understand to do things like control the modes. The other place that I use this for with clients is if you have unsaved changes and you try to leave, I've written it so that a pop-up happens, right? And I'll put a link to the pop-up video below, but that was the trigger for the pop-up. If you try to click on a navigation button or a, uh, you know, go to the next item button without saving your changes, we do the pop-up and say, hey, silly, you forgot to change this particular field. And we're doing all of that based off of, you know, the trigger being form two unsaved. So. That's unsaved, um, very helpful in making these conditional scenarios where you need to have uh, your app be a little nicer. So let's delete all this though, and so let's talk about another one. So the next really important one for me is what we call last uh, submit. And so what last submit does, that's a special property of the form that contains the record of the last item that the form submitted. And so where we can do that is when I need to like have um, pieces build upon each other, where I want to have kind of a multi-step process and I need to reference the thing that I just submitted. Maybe I need to reference the person's title in an email that I want to send after I submit the form, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that last submit property in order to kind of drive that experience. So what you can do, so we're going to go up here, we're going to actually put that uh, save button back on here. So that, cause right, cause that's going to submit our form and that's what we want to trigger on. So I'm going to do a submit form like that. All right. And so we'll go up here and I'll actually before we do that, we'll grab a label. And so then here we go. This will say the last name of the person you submitted is submitted is right. And then we're going to do like this form two dot dot last submit okay and right now it's like all squiggly lines because it doesn't know um it hasn't been done before so go over here we're going to i don't know we'll change my favorite color to red we don't really have to make a change but we're gonna hit the button so then that just submitted the change and then it's like hey Wait a minute, Shane, you didn't do that right. Well, what do you do? Dot last submit dot, duh, we want to show the, the last name. So there you go. The last name of the person you submitted is Young. So if we go over here, we click on Greg, right? And we'll uh, make Greg a driver too, like we keep threatening to do. We'll say button. And so then the last name you submitted is Peter. So this is a very important piece of information, right? Let's go look at that again. So what we're doing is we're taking advantage of form two, right? That's our form. The last submit, so that's getting that last record, 
that we push out, and then we're pulling the last name field from that record. And we can do that for any of these. And what you'll notice also though, is look at this. These are, if you're, you know, if you've done it enough, O data. what is that? This is a SharePoint list I'm writing to. It doesn't matter, but in this case, it's a SharePoint list. So one of the things you might need to know is that is the ID of the SharePoint list. And this works whether you're doing an edit item or a new item. So I tell you all that, I just pull this up here. Let's add another form to the screen. We'll do a display form since I made fun of those the other day. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, all right, you, your data source is that same list. Let it fill in all that junk. All right, we're not gonna overthink it. We're just gonna accept it. But we can set the item property of this to be form two dot last submit. Oh, so look at that. Why is that important, right? Because sometimes people ask me about things like, hey, I wanna have a new form. And then after they finish you know, doing the new button and submit it, I wanna give them another form to go in and add more data, right? Add, fill in other fields I didn't wanna show them before they submitted it the first time. And so they can build these cascading forms by referencing the last submitted, the last one, because this data now is tied. Look, there's the link to the item. This is tied to that actual SharePoint record. It, it is not, it's being pointed to from the value from here, but this isn't like a nebulous value. If I go and make this an editable form and edit this data here and submit it, it's gonna to go to the SharePoint list because this is connected to the SharePoint list. Right? And any data source will work, so this is not a SharePoint specific thing, but if I click on my form, right, it is connected to, there's my data source. That same SharePoint list could be a SQL table, it could be CDS, it could be Excel, it doesn't matter. But, so this one's a very interesting one because this is connecting the dots to the last item, right? So that's um, an interesting one um, as well for me because it gives me that ability to reference what I've already pushed and use it in different ways, whether it be metadata to send emails or to populate other forms. The last one we might look at is form two dot updates. Okay. Now notice here that when I did form two dot updates, it, it, it kind of knows, right? Let's go over here. So let's go back to the label first, it's easier. So let's go form two, oh, let's go form two dot updates and then do our dot here. And so here are the different properties, right? So we could do last name, that's gonna be Peter, just like it should be. But down here, why do I not see all the other data? You notice the only thing I see, all right, I'll do it from this screen, it's easier to see. The only data that I see is the, uh, five fields that I filled out up here. Because dot .update is not tied to the record that it pushed out there, it is just the actual raw data you submitted. So I haven't come up with cases where I've needed this, but because we're all about making sure you know all the nooks and crannies, I wanted to make sure that you knew about this because updates is literally just these five pieces of information that we passed. Dot .last submit is that entire record out in SharePoint. Kind of the same thing, kind of not the same thing. So if you're like, oh, whoa, mind blown, I don't know what you're talking about, that's okay. Just use dot last submit. I haven't come up with a scenario where I've needed up updates. I think where updates might come into play is if you were submitting to a data source like, say, CDS or SQL or somewhere where behind the scenes your data is getting processed and you want to see the raw data you were pushing instead of the SharePoint list data, that might be where this uh, this comes into play. But dot updates, these are the values that we pushed to our list. Dot last update or dot last submit, that is the actual raw data. Okay, so believe it or not, that's all I've got for you today, right? Three new properties, unsaved, updates, and last submit. I keep having to look over here because I can't remember them. They don't, they don't like logically line up in my head. But those three properties, um, the dot uh, last say or dot unsaved, I use that one all the time, right? Because I, I do, I wanna give people the ability to edit, but I wanna make sure that they haven't lost their changes or anything. Um, so I use that one a lot to drive conditional behaviors. Dot updates, I've never used in a customer app. 
that last submit, I use to pull things like grab the email address of that last person. So when we send out the email, we know, or maybe we want to push over to flow. Here's what we're doing. Um, so that's the way that I use these particular ones. Also remember, these are special properties of the form control. So if you're working in a gallery or you're working in some other type of you know, field or other control, these aren't there. These are just a byproduct of the edit forms. All right. So I think that'll wrap this one up. Remember that if you've got questions, if there's nooks and crannies of forms I haven't covered in the first several videos or this video, you know, I've got a couple more videos to go, but send me comments, leave me tweet or leave me comments or send me tweets, whatever. Uh, tell me about it so I can make sure that I get those all captured because at the end of the series, I want to do a video that's like, hey, here's the 10, you know, form questions that I got along the way and kind of make that and, you know, give you a shout out for doing it. All right. And as always, if you need any help, um, good old Power Apps 911, we're here to help you. You know, we got the new guy, got to keep him busy. Chewy uh, likes dog food, so let us know. But thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. If you got a second, click the subscribe button. That always keeps me making more videos. Or if you want to work together, need some help getting your Power Apps going, hit me up at Power Apps 911. Always happy to work together. Or finally, if you're really just looking for more videos, that's probably what it is, check out the Power Apps playlist over here and you know, enjoy that. All right, thanks and have a great day.